Hey guys, thank you for joining us for another men's Bible brief. If you can join us on Wednesday mornings, the information is on the screen. If not, we got you covered on YouTube right here. Well, let's go ahead and join the brief in progress. God bless you. Hey guys, it's time to get this party started. My name is Nathan Hartfield and I will be your host today. I want to thank you on behalf of our pastor, Senior Pastor Dr. Terrence Autry. Welcome you to Christ Community's Men's Bible Brief. Just a few things before we get started. This is a safe environment. We do not judge, crosstalk. We are share their ideas and thoughts as men, not judging. Uh, if you have any books, resources, or any other links that you might want to share with a brother, uh, please utilize the chat and do so. Uh, if you'd like to be heard, please raise your hand, either using the chat or physically, and someone will uh, recognize you and to speak. Uh, at this time, please mute yourselves, maintain a level of respect and Zoom anonymity. And our hump day, food for thought today is... <laughs> I'm now informed of how misinformed I am. I am now informed of how misinformed I am. I wrote that down about, oh, 2.30 this morning when I was trying to get this paper together. So y'all pray for me. Father God, we come right now in the magnificent name of your son, Jesus, just thanking you for another day, thanking you for what it is, Father, you being God and you being God all by yourself. You keep giving us something that's not promised, and that's another day. And we're truly to see fit to, to bestow your grace and mercy upon us, Father God. We don't deserve it, but you are so gracious. Thank you for first loving us that allows us to love you, Father God. We pray right now for these men that are here, for those that are on their way. We pray for our pastor in his absence, uh, enjoying his vacation, Father God, that you would do exactly what you need to do in each and every one of our lives, Father God. Touch as you see fit, Father God. Cleanse as you know how. And prepare the way as you always do that we might be able to go out and share your word. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our speaker for today is none other than Brother Elisha Comer. Come on, Brother Comer, and bless us. Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, I hope you all, you all can hear me. This is the first time I've done this, so please be patient with me. Um, today's uh, teaching is on loving God wholeheartedly. It's uh, chapter 17 of the book, The Measure of a Man. And so um, I'm, I'm hoping I'm able to get enough of this chapter to kind of uh, give you uh, give you whatever blessings you need from it. It has a lot in it. I'm not sure if I want to cover everything, but I did hit those things that uh, that I just felt like had to be hit. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get started. It is possible for us to love God wholeheartedly only because he loves us unconditionally. And I truly believe that. In Philippians 2.13, it reads, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. And so I know we're all here trying to please God and that's why we're here. So how do we recognize what is good? Do I have goodness in and of myself? And the true answer to that with me is no, I don't. Knowing this is essential to live in the grace and the power of God, I must first realize that I cannot do anything good or right without him. So in Romans chapter three, verses 10 through 18, it reads, no one is righteous, not even one. No one is truly wise. No one is seeking God. All have turned away. All have become useless. No one does good, not a single one. 
Their talk is foul, like the stench from an open grave. Their tongues are filled with lies. Snake venom drips from their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. They rush to commit murder, destruction, and misery always follow them. They don't know where to find peace. They have not, they have no fear of God at all. Most, if not all, of these things apply to me if I am not actively participating in a relationship with the living God. So, how do I fix that? I do that through prayer. I do that through study. And I do that through practice. Practice. What is practice? So I'm going to give you an example of practice. When I was in my 20s, I would go to the gym and work out. My only goal was to look good and be strong. Now, at that age, all I really cared about was impressing women and to make sure that people stayed out my face. But if you got in my face, I wanted to make sure you regretted getting in my face. So I worked out for those purposes. But I had a friend who played quarterback uh, for a semi-pro team. And because he was fast and extremely, you know, he was fast, he was uh, he was tall, you know what I mean? And, 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 and he would, I hate to say it, he was black. They would have him play wide receiver because you guys remember back in the day, you could, if you were a quarterback, I don't care how good you were. If you were fast, if you were athletic, they put you at a different position, most likely wide receiver or sometimes running back. But he had convinced me to try out for this football team that he had been playing for. Uh, and I agreed to do that. Uh, but on the day that I tried out, uh, the day I tried out, I made the team, but they didn't want to start me. But I hadn't been working out for them to start me. I had been working for other uh, other means. So what I decided to do that off season, I I started doing farm boys. I would I would go to the track and meet up with the quarterback guy. I would, I would run routes. I would uh, I would I would practice licking the ball into my hand. You know what I mean? I would run wind wind sprints. I did everything that I needed to do to get faster, to get stronger, to be more efficient at catching the ball. I studied the playbook. I I, I practiced and and it and it worked out good for me. By the start of the next season, I was the fastest, the strongest, the 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 head head and shoulders, I was the best running back that came out for that team. And there was no question. So here's the deal. If we if we practice loving God and his people wholeheartedly the same way we practice those things that we deem important, those things that we, that that excite our passions, then then our relationship with Christ and our ability to love wholeheartedly will exceed our expectations. But here's the thing. It will please God. I want to please God. I'm sure we all want to please God. In Philippians 2.13, it reads, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. We have to plan to practice. You can't plan without putting your mind into it first. We think it out, we figure how we're going to go about it. We plan to do it. We set that as our goal and we and we do it. In Philippians 4, verse 8, it reads, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things 
that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learn and receive from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me do, then the God of peace will be with you. He's giving himself as an example for us to learn how to practice, to learn what that's what we need to to please God. And so I just think I think that's some great stuff right there. Um, but what does God command us to practice? What is God's first commandments? Love the Lord your God with all your heart your soul and your very all. And that last part where I say in your very all, it's, it, it's the translation from Hebrew that, that that is what it said, but you know, the English, English they, they kind of trans, uh, translate it differently, but from, from the accurate translation, that's what it says. And the second commandment, Jesus said, it's like the first. Love your neighbor as yourself. I take this to mean that in everything we do, we should purpose to practice walking out these two commandments. If we can do that, I find it hard to believe that we won't please God. But remember this, the adversary will throw everything at you, but whether it's women, money, self-righteousness, pride, worrying about what people think of you. He will do all of this and more to distract you from what you should be doing. I have a, 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 a the, my Hebrew teacher, the guy who I go to his Bible studies and he, and he helps us translate the scriptures. Uh, he has a really, really good relationship with the Lord. He's a really good teacher. And, 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 uh, and so, what he told me to ask myself when I have a question about what I'm doing in my life, is it, does it please God? He said, ask yourself, does it bring me closer to God? If you ask yourself this before you do the things that you do, and we should ask ourselves, I don't ask myself all the time, but when I do ask myself, I find clearly we ask ourselves, it helps. Does this thing glorify God or does it glorify myself? Does it please God or does it please me? Remember, you can please God and please yourself and it can at the same time, but in order to get there, you have to have a relationship. With you have to talk to him. You have to spend time with him. You have to praise him. All of those things that we are wanting to do the pre please God, and for, we have to do that. When I when I pray, I often ask the Lord to align my will with His will, and by doing that, if if my will and His will align, no matter what I ask for, I'll get that. I'll receive that. And I have confidence that he will do, do it because I am saved by grace. In Ephesians 2, chapter, uh, verse 8 through 10, it reads, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good for, for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So he promises, he promises us all of this, and he fulfills his promises, all of his promises. He is he is he is he is true. So let's so let's let us uh we have four questions. Today and the four questions, uh, the first of those questions is, do I take advantage of opportunities to do good to all people, believers and non-believers? 
The second question is, am I using my material resources to help people in, in need? The third question is, do I have a good a conscience about my behavior? And the last question, the final question is, am I truly concerned about the unity of the body of Christ? So 